My name is Rona Bortz. I'm a geneticist at the University of Leicester. I study a microorganism called Saccharomyces cerevisiae. It's a yeast. In fact, it's the same yeast that's used in baking and brewing. So this organism has had huge impact on human life from the very beginning when we learned how to bake and brew. What I use it for is as a model organism for studying two very important processes, how gametes are generated, i.e. how we make eggs and sperm, and how we control the fidelity of DNA replication, because that is important for maintaining our DNA so that we don't acquire cancers. I do what I do because I love solving puzzles. Um, Mendel's laws were first discovered in peas, but the formalism of genetics and one of the important aspects of Mendel's laws is how, how traits segregate. And traits are linked on chromosomes, but as you know, you don't look like exactly like your parents. So you've gotten different traits, some from your mother and some from your father. That process is called recombination. And the intricacy of, of all of that is absolutely fascinating. And it's the kind of puzzle that, I'll, that I like to, to solve. Yeast is a wonderful organism because it divides very rapidly. So that means we can do experiments in a very reasonable time frame. So on average, a yeast cell will divide every 90 minutes. So that means if you start with a single cell, in two days, you'll have a colony with has, which has enough cells in it that you can do biochemistry, genetics, whatever you like. Yeast and all higher eukaryotes are diploid. That means they have two copies of every chromosome. They got two copies when the egg and the sperm fused to make the embryo. So this means that the egg and the sperm each have only one copy. So when a, a human or yeast go to make their gametes, they need to go from a diploid number down to the haploid number. It's this process that I study that's called meiosis. Meiosis is the process by which gametes are formed. And in yeast, this process takes about two days. The details of this process at the genetic level and what happens to the chromosomes are identical to what happens in humans. The end result in yeast is something called a tetrad, which contains four spores. These spores are each equivalent to either an egg or a sperm. But we can then take this tetrad, split it up, and then analyze each one of those spores individually to understand what genetic material they inherited. And this is actually how I do most of my work. Many human diseases can be modeled in yeast. The two that I'm particularly interested in are infertility and a disease called hereditary non-polyposis colon cancer. Remarkably, it turned out that a particular gene that is very important for segregating chromosomes, in its absence, yeast doesn't undergo meiosis properly. And that can be a model for infertility because when gametes are not made properly, the resultant is infertility. Using yeast, we can study infertility because we can make mutations in many genes that are involved in this process and assess whether they have an effect on the meiotic process. I'd say there's probably a hundred genes. When we know that they cause defects in yeast, we can then go on to higher organisms like mouse. So people have made mutations in many of the genes that are, were originally discovered in yeast to find that they made mouse infertile. And once we know that the mice are infertile, it becomes useful to devise experiments or 
what we call screens in, in humans to find if men who have been diagnosed with infertility happen to carry mutations in these genes. But the other thing that we're doing is turning things around now. So these mutations that we found in men can be made in the yeast gene and then studied in the yeast gene. And so we're in the process of making some of those mutations in yeast and asking whether now we've, we've gone backwards and shown that these particular changes cause infertility in yeast.